G'day guys, I've got a chemistry question today, specifically titrations, more specifically back titrations. Now what a back titration is guys, is when we have some kind of sample, in this case we've got an unknown hydroxide sample, what a back titration involves is us mixing the sample with an excess reactant, such as in this case we have hydrochloric acid. Now what a back titration effectively does is it's in what we also called an indirect titration. So these two things react, blah, 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 blah. But what happens in the end is we have some hydrochloric acid left over because it was in excess. Now what a back titration does is we then get the resulting solution which has less hydrochloric acid in it because the hydrochloric acid has been consumed in the reaction and we titrate against that. So basically what we do is we measure the amount of hydrochloric acid at the end of the reaction and we know how much hydrochloric acid we've started with and because of the difference we can tell something about this initial block of stuff that we stuck in the hydrochloric acid in the first place. That's my basic sort of uh, simple English explanation of what a back titration is. I don't want to sort of uh, give you too much mumbo jumbo if you like you know if you're only just coming to this kind of topic. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a 0.903 gram sample of an unknown metal hydroxide was mixed with 20 mils of 2 mole per litre hydrochloric acid and enough water added to make 100 mils of solution A. Cool. So this is solution A in our question. This is what happens. We have a reaction that involves this unknown metal hydroxide plus two hydrochloric acids, which neutralizes to form a salt and some water. Okay. So what we then do is we take an aliquot of this solution, which has been reacted with this sample and titrated it against sodium hydroxide. So we have sodium hydroxide in the burette and it was titrated with this much sodium hydroxide. So this sodium hydroxide is we're using this to work at how much hydrochloric acid is remaining after the reaction. What is the metal M is the question. All right, so let's go about answering this. I'm going to separate the question from my solution. I'll leave that picture there, you know, a bit of art. So let's start. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the initial number of moles of hydrochloric acid before we add it to the sample. So let's start with initial. hydrochloric acid, and this is going to be equal to the concentration of the acid times the volume of the acid that we're using, which is equal to the concentration is 2 moles per litre, and we're timesing that by the volume in litres, which is 20 mils, so we've got 0 0.02 litres, and that's going to give us 0 0.04 moles. Good. Now, what we then are going to do is we're going to start calculating the amount of hydrochloric acid at the end. So this is important for the final part of our calculation. So now we're going to start working on the final amount. So let's have a look, final. So the final amount is going to be determined by the sodium hydroxide. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we titrate. So the number of moles of NaOH, again, is equal to Cv. It's a fairly useful expression, this concentration times volume. And the concentration is 0 0.05121. Multiply by the volume, 0 0.01764. Now, 
and that gives us a number of moles of sodium hydroxide to be quite small, 9.033 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, what's important here is that this number of moles of sodium hydroxide is in the 10 mil aliquot. So what we then have to do is we then have to work out how much is in the 100 mil solute would have like reacted with 100 mils of the solution. So in the 100 mils, we would have used 10 times that. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a molar ratio because we know sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid is one to one. We can write the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, this is remaining in the solution, is going to be equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that I titrate, which is equal to 9.033 uh, times 10 to the negative 4. moles. Okay, so what I do from here is this is in 10 mils. I need to work it out in 100 mils. So the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that would have been remaining in 100 mils is going to be this multiplied by 10. So I'm going to just have 9.033 times 10 to the negative 3. Perfect. So what we then can do is I start with this many moles of hydrochloric acid and I end with this many moles of hydrochloric acid. So what we then go to, there's a lot of steps in these sort of equations, is we go the number of moles of hydrochloric acid consumed. So how many moles of hydrochloric acid react with this 0 0.903 gram sample of this unknown metal hydroxide is going to be equal to the amount we had to start with, a 0 0.04, subtract the, the amount that we have to finish with, 9.033 times 10 to the negative 3. And that is going to be equal to 3.0967 times 10 to the negative 2. Perfect. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So what we then have to do, so this is the amount of moles of hydrochloric acid that's consumed. So this number here relates to this here. So what we then have to do is we have to do another molar ratio because this is our second equation or our second reaction that we have to determine the molar ratio for but it's actually the first reaction that occurred because back titrations we work backwards. So as you can see the number of moles of this unknown metal hydroxide is going to equal half the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid that we have. And it's important if you're in an exam that you write down these molar ratios. You might think it's a waste of time, but if you make a silly mistake, these are going to be the bits that sort of save you, your skin and get you a few marks. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.30. 967 times 10, negative 3, times by a half. So we have half the amount of metal hydroxide as hydrochloric acid because we have one of these and two of these. And that's equal to 0 0.0155 moles. Cool. Now, what we then do is now we have the number of moles that this number is equivalent to. 
So we can write that as a statement. So let's just pull that up to here. And we can write a little statement with a black. We can say 0 0.903 grams is equivalent to 0 0.0155 moles. Now, I don't know how well you guys know your um, number of moles, molar mass, and the actual mass of compound, but the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So the molar mass, it follows, big M, is equal to the mass that we have divided by the number of moles. And in this case, the molar mass is going to equal to the mass we have, which is 0 0.0. 903 divided by the number of moles 0 0.0155 and that pumps out a number of 58.32 grams so the molar mass of my metal hydroxide so I can say the molar mass of my metal hydroxide is equal to 58.32. So what I can actually do now is to work out what that M is, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my molar mass and I'm going to subtract the weight of those two hydroxide compounds that I have. So I'm going to say the mass, this is going to look funny, the mass of M is equal to 58.32 subtract 2 times 16 plus 1.008 and that my friends is equal to 24.3 grams now what you then do is hopefully you guys will have a periodic table I wouldn't expect you to remember what all the, the molecular weights of all of the different atoms are but we would then scan the periodic table specifically down group 2 and find a element that has a molar mass close to 24.3 and we find that M is actually equal to magnesium. And that guys is the solution. So, just going back, going back, haha, <laughs> back titrations are indirect titrations. So, back means indirect. And what that means, again, is that you aren't titrating against the sample that you're looking for. What you're doing is you react the sample with an excess solution and then titrate against the amount of solution that is remaining. And if you know how much solution there was to start with and how much there was to finish with, the difference between this or the amount that's consumed is going to tell you something about what your sample is or what your sample's characteristics are. So when they give you back titration questions in the end, in the end, in the exam, what you need to do is you need to go, okay, what is the um, compound that I'm putting in in excess? Can I find its starting number of moles and its finishing number of moles? Can I work out what the difference between them is? And then how am I going to use that difference to solve whatever they're asking? So these are quite a complex sort of calculation question in chemistry exams. A lot of kids fear them, but it just takes a little bit of practice, guys, and a few of these problems. Yes, they take a while to do just one problem, and if you make a small mistake, it takes an even longer time to figure out where the hell it was made. But persistence is the key, guys. You just got to keep on keeping on. But, you know, if you bang your head against the wall, guys, eventually that wall will definitely fall down. So, you know... 
keep going, keep trying at it. If you have any problems with my explanation, you know, give me a holler and I'll try and explain them for you. But until next time, guys, you know, subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up if it helped, and enjoy your chemistry.